All right, so let's finish out this model. We, our last question we had to store for was, are you a creeper and or a stalker? And we were just getting a, a true or a false. And so in here, we're going to say public Boolean and call it a creeper stalker. Now I wanna emphasize this one because depending on the database that we use, it may not like the fact that this is a Boolean. And so um, this one ends up being a little different. I think actually we're gonna make it a number eventually, but well, let's leave it as a Boolean for now so we can, can emphasize that point. Um, so now I've got this model set up. It's all ready to go. So I've got a picture at some point, we can stamp out now an instance of this model that will have each of those fields in that instance, I'm drawing a circle with my fingers, in that instance, each of those fields will be there for every time one of these instances is stamped out. Um, you know, just like a bullet in RoboCode or whatever other objects we've used, it's stamping them out one at a time that is an instance of an application. All right, so when the user fills out that application, this is where, again, our uh, tag helpers that we loaded up in view imports is going to come into play. This is not a normal thing in the world of HTML, but in ASP.NET we can do this and we'll see that it saves us a lot of time and trouble. And so all we do is this, we go into that input box and we say that this is ASP4 and then we, Currently, it, it, it can't see the model, so when I try and put in something here, it's not going to bring it in. I need to bring in this model. Now, this comes back to our view start page, or sorry, our view imports page, where I'm saying using date me models. And so if I didn't have that, then in here, I wanna bring in the model to be able to access it. Then up here at the top, I'm gonna to put some C sharp code using the at sign, and I'm gonna say, I want to use, and then I can put in the name of the project, date me dot models dot, and then what's the name of the, the model we're looking for? It's application. And so back to my, uh, that I not saved. We should be able to see application. Um, what am I doing wrong here? Oh, it's not at using. <laughs> hey, another great teaching moment. I love it when I make mistakes. It's not at using. We're not importing a library. It's at model. We want to bring in a model. Okay, so much better. Okay, so let's start over again. So at model date me is the name of the, the overall project. And then I want to go into the models folder and then in there I can see an application. Well, because in my view imports, I'm already bringing into the project this uh, date me models, then it actually knows what an application is. So I can just say the model is application and it will recognize it directly because of this view import statement already taking care of this first part. I'm already importing, so to speak, the, the whole models folder into my project across all the views by using this view imports. And so in the specific uh, model that I want, I can type out the full thing like we just did, model models uh, application, or I can just refer to application directly. But once I've imported it either way, then when I type this ASP4 now, whoops, ASP4, and set it equal to, now it'll come up with the different fields. So first name is equal to first name. And then when we do this, um, one of the things that's kind of good practice is that I can also make the label ASP4 that same thing. I keep typing the wrong key. First name then if the user clicks on the label or the input box, and picture a mobile device here with your finger trying to get in clicking on the box, if you accidentally hit the label, it will put the focus on the box if we do this. And so this is good practice. So for each of these things, we just wanna go in and say ASP four equals, and then whatever we're looking. So this is the last name. 
And so input box ASP4 equals, and then uh, last name again. And then through this whole process, keep going. So label ASP4, I keep typing type four with the E on the, I think it's a subliminal message. I want to go golfing. Um, and I do say four a lot, so that that makes sense, perfect sense. Okay, so then age, and then ASP4, did it again. There's something about the word four that makes me want to just type it out. ASP, let me see if I can not do it this time. ASP4, why do I do that? This is a completely new thing. I don't usually have this problem. Uh, let's see, this is for the phone number. And then ASP4, ha, I did it that time. Phone number. And then here's the major, so ASP4, getting better, major. ASP4, this is very exciting video here. Major. ASP4, the occupation. Now usually you do this as you're going along. You'd build the model first and you do this as you're going along. So it's not as painful as it seems right here. And you're saying, is there an automatic way to do it? There actually is, but uh, we're not looking at that yet. And so uh, last one, are you a creeper stalker? So ASP4 with an E for um, creeper stalker. And then in our select, in the select statement itself, we'll say ASP4 and then Creeper Stalker. All right, so it's not liking something. And um, if I save this, I don't know exactly what it's not liking. Malformed label tag helper. There must be a start and end tag. I don't know if you're getting the same error or not. And always a good idea when you're making changes like that and something just seems weird, it's not really showing. It is uh, gives you the option here. So as you hover over it, first thing is to look at this light bulb, which will give you suggestions. Should Do you want to remove the input tag? Well, I don't think that's what I wanted to do. And so sometimes, again, it's so complicated. Sometimes we just get lost, I think. Pull up the dating application again. No, it still doesn't like it. I must have messed up somewhere. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Label A. All right, so that's a malformed tag. What did it, it wanted me to delete it? So I gotta get the little light bulb to show up. I think that's what it said. Show potential fixes is to remove that, but it's, it's cascading from this line above it where I need to have that gone and then we're, we'll be okay. And so now this form is bound to this model so that when we now submit, it's going to create an instance of an application and put all the information that the user has typed in in an instance for us to use to do whatever we want to with it. Now, what do we want to do with it? The answer is that we want to put it in a database. We're going to take this information that they submit and we're going to put it into a database. And that will be what our next series of videos deals with. But for now, we just have the information in an object here in our app. And we can do something with that object just here in that app without connecting to the database. And so we want to run through one example of that, which we'll do in the next video. Spencer out.